Coming up in center circle, former reggae girls coach talks about his football academy in Orlando. Another Jamaican, Valny Brown, doing likewise in Fort Lauderdale. And Emmanuel Christian Academy's 19-year drought has come to an end. Coach Hugh Menzies may have walked away from the Reggae Girls program, but he has enough to occupy his time running the Florida Craze Crush, his own football academy. The Craze Crush was founded seven years ago and has a registration of between 1,800 and 2,000 players. Um, different levels, you have the recreation level, you have the development level from between ages four and, and eight development level and then you know, the and then obviously the nines through nineteens we have the next portion of the club. But um, you know it's a pretty pro pretty um, well run club. Um, we've done we've done fairly well across the country. Uh, we're in the top one of the top leagues on um, the ECNL which is the elite national league for the United States and we play in the Southeast region and um, it's a boys and girls club but we do a lot more than just football. We do a lot of the community based. We do a lot of um, things that we want to impact the community. And plus, you know, we're not trying to just teach football, we're trying to teach life skills. At the end of the day, we got, not everybody's going to have the opportunities to continue playing football. And we feel like we need to create that environment that helps them go into the, the workforce and hopefully come back and give back to their community. We do have a league in the summer um, that we have the boys. We play in a league where, where um, that we do have players come in and and just reside for two months here, and then we we play through that league, and they get looked after and taken care of, and then we um, obviously they get recruited um, by either pro scouts or or um, colleges or so forth that they come in. And, um, and get evaluated and then either move on to, the, to certain levels that they, um, those individuals are coming to evaluate them. The, the membership pays fees, but however, that's not gonna run your club. Uh, the membership alone can't run your club. So we have sponsors, um, we, we, we build partnerships with different entities, government entities, um, the city, um, the, this is Winter Spring City right here, so we have a partnership with them to have a 10-year contract with all the fields. So we, we build these partnerships because obviously we're giving back to the community and, um, and so we're making things a lot more affordable for us to, to, to provide for these individual memberships that we're, we're trying to move on into the rest of the world. Well, you know, we have good people, and that's the important thing. You can't do it by yourself. You have to have an infrastructure to manage everything. We, we, we segment different programs. We have coordinators for each program, directors that oversee those things. And then, you know, we have, a, we have, a, um, we have an org chart that, that funnels into me. Um, we create a board on top of me that kind of helps um, helps facilitate a lot of the things that we need to do, get done. Um, but um, major big projects the board kind of handles, and I'm on that board. So, but um, but you know we have good people, coordinators, directors, a whole infrastructure that's 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 in place to help um, help facilitate this whole program. We have a very good program that we have. Um, it's called our Tops program, and Tops program has 50 players and it's our special needs kids. And I think that's one of the programs that we highlight a lot because you know, we, we, it shows that we're not just focusing on the kids that are gonna make it to the next level, we're focusing on the community. So that's important. And then obviously Nike has been very gracious with me and, and uh, we have a great partnership with Nike um, and they've helped me through the process. Menzies says running an academy is not a plaything, but a business. First of all, I think we have to be educated on what we really want, um, you know, how this business runs. Because this is a business and people, people need to run it like a business. It's not about just having a bunch of balls and dropping cones down and let's go train and let's go play. It's a business. There's a, there, there, you have to create some type of infrastructure 
that can sustain this thing. Because it's not about just having an environment for a year or two or three years. It's, a, it's an environment. So when, when I leave here, hopefully this club is still here to serve the community. So we have to educate ourselves on how we do that. And, you know, we have to be receptive to a lot of things that hard work, you know, which is, which is very, and, and patience and understanding that this is not just an overnight thing. You know, this is a process. So, so and then we have to departmentalize a lot of things where you get people that are good at what they're are, are, are good at and put them and put them in place where as a whole, it becomes more of a holistic and more beneficial for the community. Menzies says there is too much emphasis placed on the end result instead of the development. People want to win and constantly win, but they don't know how to win and what it takes to win. So, you know, I think, I think we do pay a lot of attention on the end result and not the results to get there. So, you know, it's, 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 I think that's just people in general. But Jamaica, for, for sure, um, you know, you got you to gotta grind a little bit. And I think, I think that's something that they lack. They want instant gratification and that's, that doesn't happen in this business. And, um, you know, you got to invest your time, you got to invest your sweat. And um, we call it sweat equity, and that's, that's what they, they're missing. But what would it take to have something like this set up in Jamaica? We have the resources. People think we don't have it, but we have it. We just got to get the right people in place and, 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 make, and educate people on what, 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 what it takes to get to that point. And then hopefully you can, you can start get the younger generation in there learning the business and then just start sprinkling them in different parts of the country and then create that create that whole holistic type environment for football. So we have to get sponsors, we have to go out, but in order when we get those sponsorships, we have to figure ways to to start self-maintaining our own self instead of trying to always try to beg for money and so forth. So we have to create a business. But I think it can work in Jamaica at some level. Maybe not at the highest level of where we're at, but I think we can we can start from there. And you know, and, and you know, hopefully you get to develop some players that you can get some development fees to come back into the club. But you know, I think it can work in Jamaica. But it's got a, it's not it's not an overnight process. And I think that's the problem I have in Jamaica is that people think that it's going to come just like that. But it's a process, and and you got to have the right people. I just think that that GFF is missing the boat on a lot of things, branding and so forth. Um, you know, infrastructure, I think that's something that I feel that they need to um, do a better job at. And it's going to take people from the outside coming in to help. And they have to be receptive to get that help. And, um, and you know, and it's going to be, it's going to be a culture shock. There's no doubt because you have to kind of whitewash that whole business and then get back into it where you, you really departmental things and, and make sure that things are run right and, 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 and hopefully things are more transparent. And that's something that I think GFF needs to be a little bit more receptive to do. I, I did mention to the president that, hey, I'm, I'm willing to help um, when I first started. Um, and Captain, Captain was around, I, I spoke to him about this. But nothing has been transpired, and, and um, you know, and you know, hopefully, hopefully somebody will come in and they'll listen to to try to change that whole mindset. Menzies has high praises for Peter Gould of Mount Pleasant Football Academy, who has put his resources into the academy in Jamaica. And I think that's you know, I think he's tying in education with it, which I think is important because not every one of those players are going to make it to the next level, but it gives him a little bit of an opportunity to monitor them on a, an entire day. Um, obviously food, nutrition, all this stuff is important. And I think having a school, having a residence kind of helps you with that. Still to come on Center Circle, Valny Brown criticizes coach's decision not to take any local based girls to the World Cup. And a long wait finally comes to an end for Emmanuel Christian Academy.